Where does citra axone fit in that arsenal of bug juice for that bone sticking out? How do we classify and grade open fractures? Why do guidelines recommend cefazolin and gentamicin for severe injuries? Hello there farmers and friends, Mark with FarmWise. I'm a board certified emergency medicine pharmacist that makes clinical pharmacotherapy content on the social medias. I post daily infographics, reels, and patient cases. Follow at FarmWise on your favorite platform. Thanks for dropping by the Code Blue Debrief, a clinical pharmacotherapy YouTube and podcast, where we discuss emergency medicine and critical care, pharmacology, and disease state management. I'd appreciate you hit the subscribe and notification bell for more farm facts deposits in your drug bank. For today's episode, we'll be discussing how to classify and grade open fractures, guideline recommended antibiotic prophylactic agents, in addition to alternatives in the setting of patient-specific considerations. Grading and classifying open fractures. Motor vehicle accidents are the most common cause of open, lower extremity fractures and contribute to nearly a third of these injuries. Internal fractures after internal fixation have an infection rate of around 2%, compared to the up to 30% of severe open fractures. That's a pretty big difference. Depending on extent of soft tissue damage and degree contamination, bacteria can penetrate the skin barrier, deposit into the deep tissue, and form biofilms. We don't want these to turn into severe infections, and patients Per guideline recommendations with open fractures should receive antibiotic prophylaxis. Complications that arise from infected open fractures include nerve and tissue damage, osteomyelitis, compartment syndrome, and thromboembolic concerns. Prophylactic antibiotics have shown to reduce the incidence of infections. Let's get into how to grade open fractures and target pathogens. Strategies to minimize the incidence of open fracture infections consists of prompt debridement, thorough irrigation, and prophylactic antibiotics. We need to categorize the extent of the injury using the Castillo-Anderson classification, which provides a guide for treatment and facilitates communication of the injury. It's a commonly used grading scale with prognostic utility for predicting orthopedic infections from open fractures. The Castillo-Anderson classification system distinguishes three types of open fractures based on extent, severity, and exposure of injury. Type 1 injuries are defined as skin wounds that are less than 1 cm and clean, while type 2 are greater than 1 cm without extensive soft tissue damage, flaps, or avulsions. Type 3 open fractures are the most difficult to classify considering the varied injuries, degree of tissue damage, contamination, and vascular injury. These fractures are characterized as greater than 10 cm with extensive soft tissue damage or traumatic amputation. Type 3 also contains gunshot fractures and those caused by farm injuries. Given the varying degree of type 3 injuries, they're then broken down into three subclassifications. Type 3A have adequate soft tissue coverage. Type 3B have significant soft tissue loss with exposed bone that requires tissue transfer. And Type 3C consists of vascular injuries that require repair for limb preservation. East Open Fracture Prophylaxis Guidelines Per the 2011 East Open Fracture Prophylaxis Guidelines, target pathogens are listed in their Level 1 recommendations. Systemic prophylactic antibiotics should be given as soon as possible that are targeted towards gram-positive organisms. Common skin flora would include Streptococcus and Staphylococcus species. Additionally, the East Guidelines recommend additional gram-negative coverage for type 3 fractures. High-dose penicillin can be considered for injuries around farm exposures with the concern of Clostridium pathogens. Fluoroquinolones should be reserved for limited cases as they have a negative impact on wound healing. Now that we reviewed how to classify our injuries, let's go through antimicrobial specifics for open fractures based on grade. For type 1 and 2 open fractures, we would treat both of these classified injuries with cefazolin, 2 grams IV, every eight hours and continue prophylactic antibiotics for up to 72 hours. Those weighing greater than or equal to 120 kilograms will receive an increased dose of cefazolin, three grams. Patients presenting with type three open fractures will receive cefazolin, two grams IV 
every eight hours. In addition to gentamicin, five milligrams per kilogram of adjusted body weight daily intravenously for up to 72 hours. As mentioned above, type three injuries require expanded gram negative coverage. It's important for you to understand why an aminoglycoside, a class of antibiotics associated with nephrotoxicity amongst others, are recommended by the guidelines. These guidelines based their type three antibiotic recommendations on prior evidence associating a higher incidence of infections without additional gram negative coverage. Vasilis and colleagues published a trial in 1998 by randomizing 227 patients with 240 open fractures to receive either dicloxacillin or clindamycin. These agents primarily cover gram-positive organisms. From their results, type 1 and 2 open fractures that became infected were caused by gram-positive pathogens, while type 3 were caused by half-gram-positive and gram-negative. The infection rate was 3.3 and 1.8% for clindamycin compared to the 20 and 3.8% for the dicloxacillin group in type 1 and 2 respectively. However, there was a significantly high incidence of infections in both antibiotic groups for Castile type 3 injuries, which was around 70%. Their results associated clindamycin as a suitable agent for type 1 and 2 open fracture prophylaxis, but type 3 injuries would require gentamicin given the high incidence of infections without gram-negative coverage. Additionally, the EAST guidelines list as a level 2 recommendation that aminoglycosides are safe and effective options for type 2 and 3 injuries. One well, alternative has been compared for type 3 injuries when gentamicin isn't appropriate per patient-specific parameters. Alternatives for type 3 open fractures. The EAST guidelines recommend utilizing narrow-spectrum antibiotics for prophylaxis. Concerns associated with broad-spectrum antibiotics involve acute kidney injury from aminoglycosides and development of antimicrobial resistance. Back in 2014, Rodriguez and colleagues completed a pre-post protocol implementation analysis of open fracture antibiotic prophylaxis. Type 1 and 2 received cefazolin with clindamycin as an alternative for true allergies. Type 3 injuries received ceftriaxone with clindamycin and astreonam in the setting of allergies. They removed aminoglycosides, vancomycin, and penicillin from their protocol. Based on their analysis, there was no difference in infections. Additionally, there was no difference in the incidence of multidrug resistant pathogens and infection rates stratified per type of open fracture. It would also make sense that there was a significant reduction in aminoglycoside and glycopeptide use since they removed them from their protocol. There has been more recent retrospective analysis comparing cefazolin and gentamicin with cetraxone for type 3 fractures. These studies primarily found no differences in their outcomes. I provided the links below. For any patient with open fractures exposed to farm contamination, they need to receive coverage for clostridium species. Generally, high dose penicillin, metronidazole, and clindamycin can be considered against clostridium species. Depending on your institutional policy, preferred agent and dosing may be different across all open fracture types. Be an antimicrobial steward in the trauma bay. Open fracture infections can lead to nerve and tissue damage, osteomyelitis, compartment syndrome, and thrombin ball concerns. The 2011 East Open Fracture Prophylactic Guidelines reference the Castillo-Anderson classification to categorize open fractures. Type 1 and 2 open fractures are less than and greater than 1 centimeter respectively. Type 3 open fractures are greater than 10 centimeters with extensive soft tissue damage and or fractures from gunshots. These are more difficult to classify and are broken down into three subsets. For our antibiotics, cefazolin is used for type 1 and 2 open fractures. Type 3 will include gentamicin in addition to cefazolin. Ceftriaxone can be considered as an alternative to cefazolin and gentamicin for type 3 open fractures. An example to prefer ceftriaxone would be the presence of renal insufficiency. High dose penicillin, metronidazole, and clindamycin are effective against clostridium species. 
for type 3 open fractures, are you primarily using cefazolin, angiotomycin, or cetraxone? Let me know in the comments below. For more fun facts in the drug bank, check out one of these two videos, hit the follow button for more, and I hope you learned something new.